first page in your Bible in Genesis 1, verse 1. We're going to talk a little bit about the beginning of time. It says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface. Yeah, that's right. Uh, of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters, okay? God is creating, this is a whole story of God creating everything that ever was. And he goes through everything he's doing, and about four times in this he says he creates something. So he creates the water, or he creates the earth, or he creates whatever he creates, does the whole deal, right? And he'll look at it, and he'll say that it is good. You know, he says that is all right, which in my mind I'm thinking he probably means that is the sweetest thing I've ever seen. Because it's God, right? And if he created it, it's pretty awesome. And we see his creation all over this place. And then at the end of the story, the last thing that he creates is man and woman, right? He creates us, basically. And this is the first time that instead of just saying that it's good, he says it is very good. God created all this amazing stuff. He created that water. He created all these trees. He did it all. He created the skies. He created the stars. He created everything. And then at the end of the day, he created us. And he decided that we were greater than anything he's ever created. So when I look at like mountains and stuff, it just brings me this sense of awe that I almost lose my breath. Or when I stand in front of the ocean, it's just so awe-inspiring. But what God does is he looks down straight at us and he says, no, you are more awe-inspiring, more incredible than anything else I've ever created. Step one in changing the world is realizing Realizing the fact that we've all got our own issues. We've all got our own sin issues. And realizing that we are called not to judge other people, but to focus on ourselves, right? It says, do not judge. It says, do not judge because it's so destructive. Oh, yeah, I live. He doesn't pray that we would always be healthy. He doesn't pray any of that. He prays the one thing that we need more than anything, which is unity. His prayer is a prayer of unity. But as far as I can tell in a lot of ways, this prayer, a prayer from Jesus, has gone in many ways, if not in most ways, unanswered. Because as I look around the Christian culture, I, I constantly hear people arguing. 
And I constantly hear people disagreeing on things. I hear people disagreeing and arguing about baptism, about communion, about the end of the world, about heaven, about hell, about salvation, about homosexuality, about the role of women in leadership, family issues, school, politics, and on and on and on, and it never stops. And we get so caught up in these small issues these small issues, because the big issue is that Jesus Christ came and died and rose again so that the whole world could be set free. That's the only big issue.